Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Thank you so much for joining me from a word from the Lord. Uh, and today we'll be talking about uh, as a reminder that you are not alone. All right. You are not alone. And I think we need to be reminded of that. And uh, we'll go to God in prayer and we'll go ahead and get started. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity uh, to see another beautiful day. You have rescued us from death again. And we're so grateful for that. We're humble to be in your presence. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. You rang upon us on a daily basis, and we pray that we never take that for granted. We ask that you please be with those who are sick, those who are traveling, and those who have lost loved ones. And please be with the leaders of our country and this world that they make decisions that will glorify your name and not their own. We pray, Father, that you be with those who are less fortunate than we are, those who are homeless, those who are strung out on uh, on drugs and dealing with addictions, dealing with depression, anxiety, and financial challenges, relationship challenges, and employment challenges. We pray that you be with all those individuals um, who are having shortcomings that are greater than, than ours. And we also pray that we're able to make ourselves available to be able to help those individuals who are in need. We pray, Father, that as we go throughout this day, which is your day, that we give you all glory, honor, and praise in our day of worship uh, to you. We pray that it'll be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And we pray that at least one person uh, will be impacted by your word today and as a reminder to let them know that they are not alone. We love you and we thank you. And we thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, let's make sure that you have your Bibles um, as we go to uh, the scriptures for all references and reference to God. We wanna make sure that it's not based off of opinion, but based off of scripture. And that's based off of facts. So we're going to, for those of us who are still partaking the Lord's Supper at home, we want to make sure that we have the biblical examples of why we do what we do in partaking the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. So if you can, let us go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, and we're reading the verse 30. Um, again, I thank you all for joining me this morning. And as always, um, if you can, please share this video, just knowing that your share just might save somebody's soul. So please do that by all means, share the video. Uh, just working out some things here. Give me a minute. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. Be right with you. Trying to get all this stuff together here. Also, guys, if you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, Man to Man Let's Talk, for all lessons that you may have missed, um, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and also share the links when you can. All right, there we go. Okay, I think we're on it now. Good morning, good morning. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take heat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. So let's keep that in mind as we are partaking of the Lord's Supper to make sure that we're doing it in a way that will not count against us, okay? We're not just taking it as a meal or as a snack. We're doing it in remembrance of God. We wanna keep those things in mind. Again, I thank you for your prayers, for your support, for all that you uh, have done for me to know that this is a collaborative effort um, and the word of God is, is uh, it needs to be spread. Um, and, the only, and the way that we can do it today 
Uh, we don't have to knock on doors like they used to do back in the day. Um, we use our social media platform to be able to share it. So I encourage you to share the word of God, whether it's this video or anything that you see that is scripturally based and, and uh, incorrect, um, that you share the information because you know, you'll share just might save somebody's soul, man. Um, let me tell you something. We're just here for a little bit. And, um, and then after that, we, we, we will no longer be here. So we want to make sure we put ourselves in a position that it'll make God proud. So let's let's keep those things in mind, okay? Uh, as a reminder, uh, just want to let you guys know that you are not alone. The other day, um, last week, um, I got a phone call from from a young lady who shared with me that there was a young man who was in need. He was in need of male companionship. Um, he lost his mom five years ago. Um, he is living in an extended stay um, uh, place. Um, he, he has no job, he has no transportation, but he has a heart of gold. Uh, we met with this young man uh, the other day and, and uh, man to man, let's talk our organization. Some of the men from that organization got a chance to spend with time with this young man and he is amazing he is amazing he is amazing and i'm hoping that um, our meeting will continue to grow and our relationship you know with each other as we collaboratively help this young man get to the next level in his life and we were there we sat you know we we, we had great meal together and not only did we reminded him, but we reminded each other that we're not alone um, in, in the struggles that we're going through. Um, there were contemplations of suicide this young man had, uh, contemplations of you know drugs and alcohol, uh, but he allowed God to own his thoughts and realize that those were not this, you know, the right things for him to do uh, because he knew that that would be selfish and the people that depended on him um, he would not be there for him. And so he thought about those things and he realized that he's gonna keep on pushing on in the situation that he's in and, and, and know that things will get better. And being that we met was an encouragement for him and it was an encouragement for us. It was a win, win, win situation. We wins, he wins and God wins. But it was a reminder to let him know that he is not alone and, and we need to, uh, have that reminder that we are not alone. And sometimes we put a timeline on things, an unrealistic timeline, uh, a worldly timeline of where we should be in our lives based on our age. But we, we rarely consider where we should be based on our relationship with God. Let me say that again. We put a worldly timeline on our lives on where we should be based off of our age and experiences, but we rarely based where we should be on the relationship that we have with God. So it makes a big difference when we know how God operates and where God wants us to be um, in, in a particular time based off of our relationship with him compared to where the world has set things up and, and how we believe the world the world's timeline more than we believe God's timeline. So that makes a big difference. But again, the reminder is we are not alone because there's a lot of things that's not going to go right. There's a lot of things that's not going to go well, but it's all based off of what standard. Is it based off of God's standards or is it based off of the world's standards? So a lot of times what we see is we see uh, people uh, step outside of the standard of the world and we look at them a certain type of way. And what's bad about that is that we even look at ourselves the same way we look at those individuals who step outside of the standards of the world. And we can be our own hardest critic enough to where we will feel like we are alone. And, you know, even though, you know, you, you, you may have done some things that you know that are wrong, and we all have, we all have done things that were wrong. God still loves you and God still has a plan and a purpose for you. And your wrongdoing is part of your development to doing right. And we cannot allow ourselves to be consumed by the decisions that we made that were ungodly and just stop there and feel like that we're not worthy, that we're not worth it. Knowing the fact that we're still here today, that we are worth it. Yes, we are worth it. And God is not done with us yet. So just know that you're not alone. 
and things will work out in God's favor when we allow him to own our thoughts and to direct our paths. See, Jacob in the Bible was a cheater or a deceiver, and some people call him a trickster. Peter had a temper problem. David, we know David, David slept with Bathsheba. He had an affair. Plus, he was a murderer because he had Bathsheba's husband killed. Jonah disobeyed God because he didn't go directly to Nineveh to teach the word of God. He ran away from Nineveh. Paul was a murderer. He was Saul before he was Paul. And Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a warrior. Thomas was a doubter. How about Rahab? Rahab was a prostitute. Samson was a womanizer. And even though Moses had a stuttering problem, God still used him as well as those individuals that were mentioned earlier. They were imperfect, just like you and me. And even Elijah, even Elijah the prophet, who thought that he was all alone and just wanted God to take him away from the earth because I believe it was uh, Jezebel uh, who was sending her her uh, troops for him to kill him. And he thought that he was all alone. But God has 7,000 other prophets. He reminded him, you are not alone. Sometimes we get like that sometimes, right? And even though Elijah felt that way, God was still there with him. God is still there with us. Do we believe it? Do we know it? Only you can answer that question. Only God knows the truth. All them, you know, all those individuals were imperfect and was used to fulfill an assignment and a purpose God has given them. So let me ask you this. Is life as hard as we really make it? Or are we being deceived? Are we making life harder than what it really is on a daily basis? See, the world has done a great job in creating a false image. You know, we should live by, and many of us have agreed to living life based on the world's standards and not God's standards. So ask yourself the question, realistically, the standards that you're living by right now and the hardships that you may be going through, how you feel about those things when they happen to you, uh, how much is God in that? I mean, like when you, you know, when, when we have a problem with, let's just say our bills and we get, we get that pink notice that our uh, lights about to be turned off or the water or the gas is about to be turned off, right? There's a standard, you know, we have to pay our bill. Okay. But what do we do? What do we do to uh, put ourselves in, in a position, right? to where those things don't happen as often. And who do we rely on? Who do we rely on? Standards. When our money is funny and our change is strange, who do we look to? Where's God in the midst of our pink slips? Is he there? Are we dependent on him? Only you can answer that question. Only God knows the truth. You know, there's there's a there's a, a world standard way or an identity of doing things, and there's the God's way. And we want to make sure we don't put ourselves in a position to where we're living more by the world than we are by God. And the world has done a great job in creating the standards. And it's hard that when you step outside of the world's standards, man, it's brutal. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But you know, in this world, you know, all companies have some sort of identity. Let's just talk about companies for a minute. You know, you, you think about your fast food restaurants, your retail stores, you, you think about your social media platforms, you know, uh, your Amazons and uh, your, your door dashes and, and all these individuals who have these businesses, uh, they all have their own identity. And each company wants to be separate and apart from others. You know, they have their most businesses have acquired a mission, a vision, a purpose and objective of their company. They want to make sure they are not like their neighbor, especially if they are selling the same product or doing the same thing. Everybody wants to be different, right? Whether it's logos, uniforms, company colors, uh, catchphrases, media platforms, uh, and some of the tools that are used or some of the tools that are used when a company wants to brand itself. 
has its own identity, has its own standards. You know, I love watching the Geico and the Liberty Mutual commercials. You know, they sell an insurance. And even State Farm, they sell an insurance. But they all have their own identity. You know, Geico has the Gecko. Uh, State Farm has Jake. And Liberty Mutual has Emu and Doug. <laughs> but they're selling insurance. They want to be different. And they have standards. So, you know, these current tools that are used that we talk about today were used before our time. People in the Bible were identified, you know, by who they served and the length of their hair, what type of clothes they wore, what color clothes they wore, and those who were circumcised or uncircumcised. Branding, identifying, standards. But knowing in these categories, we have to remind ourselves again that if God is not in the midst of our identity, our standards, and our branding, we're going to feel like we're all alone when no, we're not. You know, what comes along with branding is accountability. This is based off the standards that a company or a group of people have set. And you know, a lot of this comes from what God did. God set the standards in the beginning when he told Adam to do this, don't do that. It's real simple. Accountability. And if these things happen, you're going to see what's going to take place. And we know the story of what took place with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and how they disobeyed God by being deceived by Satan. If we hear and see something long enough, we believe it. And if a person steps outside of that image or that standard, we question and challenge why they are not upholding the image of the company or group that they were a part of. Think about that. When these actions happen, we tend to really be hard on an individual for not upholding the worldly standards. Think about that. Right? When we're talking about worldly standards, we feel like we're all by ourselves because we 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 we're not, how should I say, putting ourselves in a position to be on the same level as the world wants us on. And it's hard. So if you're working for a company, you know what the policies are in the handbook, you know what the standards are, but it seems like you're still coming up short and it feel like you're just all alone, man. The same way outside of your workplace, you feel like you're just all alone, but you're not. If we continue to fail at upholding those standards, whether it's on the job or you know, out in the public, we, we can, uh, on the job at least, we can be written up and fired for not carrying on the image we agreed to uphold. And man, we really feel like we're alone then. What we learn from our culture and companies is we bring those things into practice in our homes. We'll take the standards of the world that's in our companies, the branding, and we'll bring it into our homes, we'll bring it into our communities, uh, we'll bring it even into our churches. And if God is not in our identity, in our companies and in our homes, it will cause problems in everything that we do. It's harder for you know, a husband to be the best husband to his wife if God is not part of it and vice versa. It's hard for a wife to be the best wife to her husband if God is not in her life. If husband and wife treat each other like, they, you know, like they're being treated in the workplace, that's the problem. The, the world standards can make you feel all alone. And then that trickles down to the children. And then it trickles over to family members and friends. We have agreed and we've allowed ourselves to co-sign and embrace the world's standards more than God's standards. But just know that you are not alone. You are not alone. God is there, and so are the people around you are there to help you, to love you in the next level of your life. The world's job, the world's job is to highlight what we do more 
than who we really are. And that is very deceiving. So we have embraced the world's teaching more than, and we've also been branded by the world. And when those things happen, we feel like we're all alone. Think about it. We feel like we are all alone because we have embraced the world's teachings and we've been branded by the world. The world has an agenda and it's not that we know God. The world's job is not to teach us God. That's our responsibility to know God. The world's agenda is to pull us away from God. The God of this world who is Satan, him and his minions going around and, and doing their things to make sure that we, we appreciate the tangible more than the intangible. We have to put ourselves in the position to know the difference. We have to make sure that we have the right discerning spirit and we're not duped by the world. You are not alone in doing this. Many times we have seen athletes, politicians, entertainers, musicians, and even ourselves being chastised and crucified for stepping outside of the world's standards. Why? Because the world's objective is to highlight what you do more than who you are. Many of us have a hard time identifying who we are because we spend so much time on what we do. That when we say, who are you? You will say, I am a whatever your work, your line of work is. No, that's not who you are. That's what you do. And if we live in a life like that, we can feel like we're all alone because we can't relate. That's why I believe people love documentaries and autobiographies because when they hear the ups and downs of a person's life, especially as someone that they know, now they can relate to that individual because now we're seeing who they really are. And it's something that we all can relate to and we don't feel so all alone. We can relate. So those individuals who have been crucified and chastised for stepping outside of the world's standards, that's pretty painful and it's hard, but guess what? It's the branding of the world's standards. And many of us, if not all of us have participated in it. We've crucified people for stepping outside of what we thought was right or wrong. We've done that. Yes, we have, and some of us still doing it. Mm -hmm. And all the thing that we're doing is we're putting ourselves in a position where we feel like we're all alone and not even knowing it, but we're not alone. And we gotta know that if we're going to be branded, Let's be branded by God and not by the world because we are our toughest critic. Why is that? Why are we so hard on ourselves? Just think, just think about if God was as hard on us as we are on ourselves, will we even make it? Will we even survive? And that put us in a position that if it's based off the world's standards, we can feel all alone. And we don't want that, right? So we don't want that then we need to remember God and how he shows love and compassion for us. We need to have that same compassion for ourselves and for each other. Just think, just think if just a little bit more of us had that mentality, how better our environment would be, how better the world would be. But again, we have to remind ourselves that we are not alone and we have to remind others that they're not alone. This world is not designed to be done alone. As we were talking to the young man the other day, as we were talking to him, we had to remind him, hey man, you're not by yourself. We're here for you and we'll do everything that we can to help you because that's what we're supposed to do. And our organization is just a tool to be able to help bring men together. It's just a tool. like Geico, like Liberty Mutual, like State Farm, those insurance companies, their, 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 their commercials are a tool to selling the same thing, insurance. My organization is just a tool for doing God's work, right? 
So we have to we have to see the value and the benefit in these things that we do to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a position where we are alone. We are not alone. And just know like the people that I read about earlier, all those individuals have made choices. All those individuals have sinned before God, but God still used them to fulfill their purpose and their assignment. The world does not have the compassion that God does. The world is conditional, whereas God is unconditional. And I remember being so hard on myself uh, when I would misplace my keys um, and did not have a central location. I was so hard on myself and forgetting and you know, saying bad things about myself uh, based off of the world's standards. But once I found a central location, it was a lot easier for me to find my keys. And I use that energy in everything else that I do. Um, but it was all based off the world's standards because I know God wouldn't say those things about me. So why would I say those things about myself? Those things carried over and everything else that when I was so hard on myself, I started to isolate myself because I didn't want to do things that would fall into the category of failing when I'm just being a human. We have to remind ourselves that we are not alone and that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's Romans chapter three, verses 23. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Everybody we read about in the Bible have sinned with the exception of Jesus. To see, if we allow ourselves to be branded by the world's standards, then we're not only going to be hard on ourselves, but we're going to be harder on each other. And that's not the way that God has created us to be. God did not create us to be that way. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to help and encourage one another because we all have our own walk with God. And our job is to help each other along the way. Just like when we're on the freeway, and everybody stays in their lane. For the most part, everybody will get to their destination safely. In our walk with God in our lives, we all have to stay in our lane, respect each other's uh, differences, and help each other to the same destination. That's the ultimate goal, is to help each other along the way. And if we don't help each other, we're automatically going to hurt each other. Our goal should be focused on helping. And when we help, our actions show that we are not alone in the things that we do. Now, we know that it's not going to be easy. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 12, don't count these things strange. Uh, the things that we're going through, that when we suffer, we're going to suffer for Christ's sake. But we are going to suffer. The question is, are we going to suffer with Christ or without Christ? So if I'm going to suffer, I'm going to suffer with Christ. Because I know for sure that I am not alone. Many times we'll get into a funk. And just like the gentleman who we, who we uh, had uh, a meal with the other day, I know that he felt this way. Because we all do at some point, just like Paul did in Romans 7, 19 through 25. Romans 7, 19 through 25, Paul in his moment, you know, realizing the struggle between the inner man and the outer man. Verse 19, it says, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. You know, the good, we know what's right. And sometimes we don't do it. And we know what's evil. And we choose to do that. That's the struggle between the inner man and the outer man. Verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present. Anytime that we're doing good and we're doing something for God, evil will always be right around the corner. 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, our spirit. 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? 
in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then when the mind I myself served the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So that struggle between the outer man and the inner man, that's a daily thing that we deal with. Choices that we have to make. And it helps that the closer we are to God, we're going to make decisions that will make him proud. But the, the more distance we are from God, then we're pleasing the God of this world, which is Satan. We have a decision to make and hopefully we make the right decision. And when we make the decision for God, we know that we're not alone. But when we make the decision for ourselves that will benefit ourselves and ourselves alone, then we are supporting the God of this world, which is Satan. There's a deceiver right? Lucifer, Beelzebub, whatever, the prince of darkness, whatever you want to call him, that's who he is. But God knows that we can overcome anything that Satan puts in front of us because he did not create us to fail. He created us to succeed. But if God, if God is not in our lives, it's harder for us to see what God has in store for us. And it's easier for Satan to put that doubt in our mind like he did Eve. When God said, do not, Satan said, did he say? <laughs> and so he put that question, he turned a, a command to a question and that was problem. And that was a problem. The same thing happens today. And when we start to question God to the extent to where we don't back it up with scripture to get our answer, that puts doubt into our spirit. And, and our spirit become more fear, full of fear, than it is of faith. And that fear activates Satan. Faith activates God. Which one are you feeding your spirit? Only you can answer that question. Only God knows the truth. Just know that you are not alone. And just know that many, if not all of us, which we have, all of us have sinned, falling short of the glory. Again, that's Romans chapter three and verse 23. And just know, even though you have done what you have done, just know that God still loves you. Know that you can't do enough wrong in this world to stop God from loving you. You can't do enough right in this world to where God, you know, have loved you enough. So God is going to continue to love us in every which way. But we have to remind ourselves that we are not alone. We have to remind each other that we are not alone. We have to stay the course. I know it's hard. It's supposed to be challenging, but it's not as hard as it can be, you know, if we're not deceived by the branding of the world. Um, if we're trying to live the world standards and God's standards, yeah, it's going to be harder for us because just like Paul said, you know, to do good and not do good, you know, that's a sin. So if we know if we know what is good according to God's standards, then we're able to embrace and to fulfill that more than trying to please the world. But the only one that we're trying to please here, family, is God. That's it, okay? I'm not trying to please my wife first. I'm trying to please God first. I'm not trying to please my children first. I'm here to please God first. Because when I please God first, then it's easier for me to please my wife. It's easier for me to please my children. It's easier for me to be who God created me to be when I'm out with my family members and friends, because I know and I'm not alone. So are you, you are not alone, but you have to connect yourself to the ultimate power source. And that is God. When you connect yourself with God, it is a reminder, a daily reminder that you are not alone. God has allowed us to be here today for a reason. And we have to make sure that we embrace what God has done for us. And we give him all glory, all honor, and all praise. So I know it's hard, but we got to stay the course. We got to stay the course because this is this world is not our home. We just passing through. Our job is to represent the kingdom and get back to the kingdom. We want to spend eternity with God. But the only way that we can do it is by being connected to him and not allowing ourselves to be deceived by the world's standards, the world's branding. And we put ourselves in a position where we are all alone because we have stepped outside of the world's standards and the world doesn't like us anymore. The world is cursing us out. The world is crucifying us. The world is chastising us. The world doesn't love us anymore because we haven't met up to the world standards and everything and we feel like we're all alone no 
we're never alone because the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 5, he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. We are not alone. And even though we have sinned, as long as we're not practicing sin, as long as we're not practicing lying or being a gossiper or, or being an adulterer or being a murderer, right? As long as we work towards turning our lives towards God, we're right where God wants us to be. And we know people who have participated in those things and, and no sin has you know, a high or low level. Lying is just as wrong or, or look just as bad as murdering. Sin is sin. So there's no discrepancies between that. So we can't just look at a person and say, well, I'm not like that person. Well, it's not about that because you have some challenges too. And that's okay. God can help us with our challenges, but just don't put yourself in the category of the world's standards and fall you know, under that umbrella of you not being worth enough because you are, you are. And if God can use the people that we read about earlier and that we'll read about later on again, he can use them, he definitely can use us. And he is using us. And hopefully we're putting ourselves in the position where God will say, well done, instead of depart from me. We gotta stay the course. Do not let the branding of the world stop you from fulfilling your purpose and assignment. Continue to make God proud no matter what. Know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalms 139 and 14, and we are God's workmanship. We're God's workmanship. You believe that? Yes. We are God's workmanship. All this right here, God created this. If you want to see a miracle, look in the mirror. Because God created you. And God does not create one star things. Everything that he does is perfect. Five star, beyond five star. You are special. You are beautiful. You are amazing. You are wonderfully and uh, perfectly made, fearfully made. You are God's workmanship. So when we see each other, we see God because God created us, not man, God. And it's a reminder every day that we see each other that we are not alone. Remember, Peter had a temper. David had an affair and he was a murderer. Jonah disobeyed God. Paul or Saul was a murderer. Mir Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Rahab was a prostitute. Samson was a womanizer. And even though Moses, you know, he stuttered a little bit in his, in his speech and was disobedient when God told him to speak to the rock, he hit the rock. God still used him. God still used him to fulfill their purpose and assignment. And if you read Matthew chapter one and you see the lineage that led to Jesus coming into this world, and you read the stories of those individuals and you'll see all of them, all of them had their challenges just like you and I do. We are not alone. So don't live this life alone. Be open, be transparent, be vulnerable and allow your weakness to be your strength. Whereas the world and the world standards that we don't show weakness because nobody wants to be around anyone that's weak. But well, that's not God's standards. Because when we do show our vulnerability, our transparency, and we're open, when our weakness is there, then comes our strength. That's how we get strong. By going, by doing what we've been designed to do. And that's to be a human being. Be God's creation. The more that we are connected to the power source, which is God, the more that God will reveal to us in our lives. If we want that revelation, then we have to obey him. We have to submit ourselves to him. You've heard the word today. Hopefully you will believe it. And as you believe the word, you will repent and turn away from the world's standards, embrace God's standards. 
confess that Jesus is the Christ. Your allegiance is to God, not to this world. Your allegiance is to God and his kingdom and be baptized for the remission of your sins. These are all things that have biblical support. And if it was good enough for the ones in the Bible that we read about, it's sure enough good enough for us. Let's make sure that we put ourselves in a position to where we're making God proud and we're living by his standards and not by the world's standards. That's on us. We're the ones who determine the direction that we will go based off of our commitment to God. It's on us. But just know that life is not as hard as it seems. The world may create an image, a false image of how the world really is when actuality is not. All we have to do, stay committed to God, let God do the rest. And then we'll know for sure, as we have seen a little bit in our lives, that we are not alone because God has always been there. He's never left us. But our commitment to him has to continue to grow on a daily basis in order for us to receive the revelations that God has in store for us. And those revelations are to help us with our assignment and our purpose while we're here. It's on us. So I'm here to tell you, you're not alone. And if you wanna obey the word of God, you can obey the word today. Contact me and we'll make arrangements and you'll be baptized today. There's water everywhere. We can make this happen. Okay, so please take that seriously and embrace your purpose and your assignment that has been given by God. Just know your nine to five is just temporary. You can't take it with you. The money that you have in your bank account or lack of, can't take it with you. Your house, your cars, all the things you're striving for, you can't take it with you. The skin on your body, you can't even take that with you. You own nothing. We own nothing here. We're just stewards of what God has allowed us to have. Our emphasis need to be on the kingdom rather than the things of this world. And when we realize that we own nothing here, hopefully that would help us to focus more on our relationship with God because that's what we want in the end is to have the right relationship with God when our time is up. Don't be deceived by the world because that's the world's job, 100%. The world is not gonna teach you God. We have to learn about God on our own and with the brothers and sisters around us, but overall the world from the media standpoint and everything else, they're not going to teach you God we have to learn God together, okay? That's it. You're not alone. May God bless you. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to remind ourselves that we're not alone and that you're always present. We pray, Father, that we continue to live by your standards and not the world's standards. And we pray those individuals who haven't obeyed your word will obey your word before it's everlasting too late. Father, we love you and we thank you for all things. Please, God, and protect us as we go throughout this day that we give you all glory, honor, and praise, and we do everything that we can to make you proud. We love you, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Please share this video for your share. It just might save somebody's soul. And uh, I continue to uh, pray for my family, businesses, and uh, my health, um, that I continue to walk in the assignment and purpose that God has given me. Um, so Dalen, Eric, uh, Uncle Henry, thank you guys for joining and everybody else who joined. Thank you so much. And uh, just remember, you are not alone. And the only thing that matters is our relationship with God. And just know that we don't own anything. We don't even own our family members. Not even, I don't even own my wife. My wife belongs to God. My children belong to God. I don't own nothing. My job is to be the best steward 
of what God has given me. And that's your job too. But just know along this way, you're not alone. Guys, you take care of yourself. I love you so much. And in the end, we'll go ahead and make God proud. Have a wonderful day. Take care.